So another great tool that we can use rather than using the web GUI and rather than using the command line is uh, third-party tools like Gitkraken. Now there's other third-party tools out there. This one uh, I've used before and it's a really useful tools especially when things get complicated. So uh, you can just head over to their website, uh, gitkraken.com. You can download uh, a free version of it here. They do have paid versions which have more options and things that you can do and uh, is uh, useful for um, commercial purposes. But if you're just using it for open source purposes, uh, you can use the free version uh, without issue. Um, you just click the main page, it'll it'll figure out what version of computer you're running and it will ask you to download. Uh, you click on it and there is a really cool instructional video if you want to watch that. It's probably more useful than my instructional video but I'm going to be targeting specifically the things we're going to be using instead of everything that you can do with Get Kraken. So do be aware that the video is there and it is super handy, super useful. So I downloaded the um, Debian package and we're going to go ahead and install that. So if we go to our downloads and we see that I have Git Kraken Debian package right there. So what we can do is sudo super user do uh, git oh no super user do uh, D package dash I boy would help if I could spell here D package dash I there we go get Kraken AMD 64 dot hit that wants my super secret squirrel password type that in and now it's going to install this package so we can use it very straightforward uh, they did a really great job uh, making this available. They do have the source code available, or not source, the um, the zip file if you want to actually compile it on your machine as well and uh, that uh, that is useful for different versions of Linux if you don't have the main version. So we've installed that, we can exit here. Uh, you should be able to find it in here now just type git and git kraken came right up. Uh, once we open it, I'm going to go ahead and lock this to the launcher so that way we can jump right back to it. It's opening up here. Take it just a second. And uh, I'm going to pause the video and log in because uh, you can sign in with uh, GitHub um, or with your git kraken account. So I'm just going to pause this for a second while I log in. All right, so I'm logged in, and a pretty painless, prod, um, painless thing to do. So uh, don't be alarmed at that. Uh, you can start new projects, you can uh, host projects, and you can open projects. So let's go ahead and open a project that we have right now. Uh, let's go to open a repository. We have our Git Playground. We have our GitHub 101. We'll say OK. Check this out. All right, so what we see here is our GitHub 101 project, and we have our um, all of our commits that we've ever done right here on the screen, and we have the other branches, both branches on here as well. Now on here we have two things. We have the um, web interface and locally on the computer. So everything we've been doing up to this point hopefully now makes a little more sense when we see it visually. But if we take our folder and right now we have checked out the new idea file branch right and that's what we see right here and uh, we can make a uh, new folder we're going to call this my folder and in that folder we're going to create a new document and we'll call this uh, git crack kraken test dot text and we'll add some information we'll say just testing we'll save that okay 
So now we've made some changes locally. Notice right away it picked up these changes and it says work in progress because it hasn't actually been added or committed yet or pushed. So this change that we're doing, we can click on the change and we can say, okay, what's going on here? Oh, we have this file has been added. You can see the difference right here. Okay, so if we like that, we can stage them, which is to say we can add them, right? So we stage all our commits. So we did that, essentially that add, you know, get add. And now we're going to uh, commit them. So we can type a commit message. We can say, uh, like we don't need this if we just want to look out here. We can say, um, we are testing git crack. Just testing, right? And now we can commit that change. So, what we have here is just like before, where we we edited our files, we did whatever we want to do, we added that change by staging in Git Kraken, and then we committed that change which then uh, wrote it to our local database. And notice here we have locally is now here. But once again, we have not pushed it, so it is not online at the origin where we started from. So if we want to push our change to the origin, then we hit this push button. And there we go. Now it both origin and local are now up to date with we are testing git kraken and we can test that right here we'll refresh our browser we're testing git kraken we can click on that and there we see that new file that we added this is also really handy because remember when we checked git status from the command line and uh, it just really wasn't very helpful because it said we were current and up to date even though we knew there was new information out there so for instance, we're here in the master branch and let's uh, let's create a new file and we'll call this file 5 uh, and we'll say just another file put some information in there, yep we've got some information, we'll create our new file okay so now if we look locally, of course we have the um, new idea, new file idea branch checked out and we could use the command line to check out the other branch um, but we're working with our git kraken tool here and what do we see? We see now, oh, our local branch is still way back here but online at the origin we have created file 5. So a couple things we can do. First off we can click on this and we can pull that information and download that to our machine okay um, so we can also double click on this Oops, that's not what I want to do um, we can double click on this and we're on the master branch right so locally this is where we are we double clicked on it we're on that branch we look in our files hey it did all that magic for us changed all that and we're like hey we want to pull this down to now be the file that we're working with. And there we go, file 5. So once again, we just clicked on the branch that we wanted, and then we clicked on the latest version, and we pulled that down, and we downloaded that branch. So it's really great. There's a lot of really cool things you can do from here. You can make new branches from here. Uh, you can um, look at the difference between remote. You know, this is the cloud, so to speak, on GitHub, and versus local where we have our files locally. So uh, really, really super handy um, tool to use. So highly recommend it. Uh, it's very handy when you get into really complicated trees and you have lots of branches and lots of things that needs to be merged. And uh, we'll take a look here in a little bit about pull requests and about uh, we, we're also going to talk about making branches where we don't initialize them with the README where we want to upload our own code instead.